There is no completely logical answer and no scientific basis for it. On that basis, my answer is. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Recently in Japan, the daughter of the brother of the current emperor getting married to a commoner became big news. The news brought various debates both in and out of Japan. And one of them was a very fundamental question. Why do we need an imperial family in Japan in the first place? So today, I'll explain who the emperor of Japan is in the first place and why the emperor system has continued to exist for more than 2,700 years. At the end of the video, I would like to introduce the ideas and opinions that I've studied and thought were the most understandable to answer the question, why Japan still needs an emperor in the first place. So I hope you can enjoy this video till the end. However, before I start, I want to make it very clear that I understand that for certain people, the existence of the emperor and imperial family means more than others. I have no intentions of denying anyone's beliefs. And please understand that this is just a video of me answering a question I received from my friends overseas. Lastly, I have only studied the emperor system in Japan. So please let me know in the comments about the history and system in your country. I would love to learn from you. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on trauma in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's go! First of all, I will explain who the emperor is in the first place. To make a long story short, the emperor is he who is believed to be the direct descendant of the gods and goddesses that created Japan in the stories of Japan's ancient myths, Kojiki and Nihonshoki. Because the imperial family is the direct line of the descendants of gods and goddesses, they are basically the representatives of divine beings in Japan. The first emperor, Jinmu Tenno ascended to the throne in 660 BC. And since that time, the Japanese dynasty has never changed. Until today, the Japanese emperor system has lasted for 126 generations and 2,700 years of history. And this is why Japan is called the world's only single dynasty nation. Or we can say that this is what the leaders of ancient Japan wanted the people to believe. Japan originally had a few hundred small countries and tribes until the first United Nation called the Yamato Administration was born around 300 AD. The leaders of the administration are the ancestors of the emperor and imperial family today. In order for them to build a centralized system, they needed to unify the mythical beliefs of all Japanese people. And this is when the Kojiki and Nihonshoki was written in the 8th century. Until then, each small country or tribe had their own myths and legends they believed in. But by spreading the story that the Yamato administration believed in, they claimed that they were the rightful rulers of Japan to justify their authority. Again, the administration was established in 300 AD, but the myths were written 400 years later in 712 and 720. So there is no way to clearly prove that the first 25 generations actually existed because they only appear in myths. Then next, let's talk about why the emperor system was able to last for thousands of years. Whether or not the imperial family is actually the descendants of the gods, or if the first 25 generations existed or not, it is a fact that a single dynasty has been in power for thousands of years. Why didn't any other powerful aristocrat or samurai try to destroy the imperial family and take over? There are various theories, but it is said that the reason for this may lie in the excellent skills of successive emperors. In fact, the period of when the emperor held real power and directly governed politics was only for a very short time in history. 
Since the Heian period, the emperor has always been just a symbol of authority, and the actual government affairs were carried out by other nobles, samurai, or the government. For example, the shogunate that existed for about 700 years in history was a government run by samurai who was given the authority from the emperor to govern this country. The emperor did not stubbornly cling to his power, nor did he completely hand over his position, but continued to entrust only the top political affairs to the most powerful people at that time. For the aristocracy and the samurai, it is enough to have complete control over political affairs. And there was no benefit in daring to overthrow the emperor, who is believed to be the descendant of God by the people. Maybe they understood that they could not rule a country with military force alone. Thus, the emperor was able to continue to exist for more than several thousand years without being overthrown, even though he was practically inferior than the aristocrats and samurai in terms of military and economic power. Another reason, I believe, has to do with the fact that Japan is a nation that believes Shintoism, which is an indigenous religion based on the worship of nature. Japan is one of the most prone countries in the world to various natural disasters. Japan is only a mere 0.28% of land on Earth, but has 7% of all active volcanoes and 10% of all earthquakes. What's more horrifying is that out of all the earthquakes that are stronger than magnitude 6.0, 20% of them happen in Japan. Also, an average of 26 typhoons pass near or over Japan every year. And landslide disasters often happen after heavy rain because about 70% of Japanese lands is mountains. Every time there was an earthquake, tsunami, typhoon, or volcano eruption, Japanese people have always treated it with a sense of fear and reverence, believing that it was the rage of the gods. To the Japanese, nature was not something that they controlled, but was something that controlled them. And as I mentioned earlier, the emperor is a being believed to be the descendant of the gods who govern nature itself. In other words, it could be said that the Japanese people fundamentally did not have an idea of overthrowing the emperor, or in other words, making nature do what you want. Then lastly, let's talk about today's main topic. Why do we need the emperor system today? Japan currently has a form of democracy in which all the politicians are elected by the people. Japan's constitution clearly states that the emperor is just a symbol and does not have the authority to appoint a governor as in the past. Then why do we still need an emperor? There is no absolute answer to this question. Just as there are countries other than Japan that have kings and queens only as symbols, there is no completely logical answer and no scientific basis for it. But it is a question that can only be answered sensitively and emotionally depending on the person's ideology. On that basis, my answer is, is there any benefit of abolishing the emperor system? I think that behind the question, why does Japan still need an emperor, there is another question, if it's not necessary, why not abolish it? I am not an extreme patriot, so I do not particularly worship or consider the emperor to be special. I am such a person, but I don't see any benefits of going to the trouble of abolishing the emperor system. For example, if the citizens of Japan are specifically harmed by maintaining the system, I would certainly abduct immediately. But of course, that is not the case. There are other opinions stating that the emperor exists because he has inherent function as a symbol of moral integrity apart from the secular powers of Japan. I think that saying the emperor is just a symbol so we don't need him is like saying we don't need religion now that we have developed science. Of course, it's not that simple, right? 
no matter how much the world changes, there will always be a certain number of people who are saved or feel valued by the existence of the imperial family, and they play a role in some way. Ignoring the thousands of years of culture and custom, and rewriting the constitution and abolishing the existence of the emperor's system will probably not happen even in the next 100 years. This is because it is as effort intensive as creating a whole new country. Japan, with its various social problems, can never afford to do such a thing. So, to make a long story short, in my opinion, there is no absolute reason for the emperor's existence today. But on the other hand, there is no benefit to abolishing the emperor's system either. What do you think about my opinion? It would be great if you can let me know in the comments. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The Emperor of Japan is believed to be the direct descendant of the gods and goddesses that created Japan in the stories of Japan's ancient myths, Kojiki and Nihonshoki. Until today, the Japanese emperor system is believed to have lasted for 126 generations and 2,700 years of history. And this is why Japan is called the world's only single dynasty nation. The reason why a single dynasty was able to last for so long is because of the excellent skills of successive emperors. They did not cling on to their own power, nor they completely hand over the position, but continued to entrust only the top political affairs to the most powerful people at that time, enabling them to exist as a symbol of authority. Also, because Japan's indigenous religion, Shintoism, is animism and worships nature, there were no ideas among Japanese people to try to control the emperor who was a representative of the gods of nature. There is no absolute reason for the emperor's existence today, but on the other hand, there is no benefit to abolishing the emperor system either. No matter how much the world changes, there will always be a certain number of people who are saved or feel valued by the existence of the imperial family, and they play a role in some way. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the Japanese emperor system, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And our goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.